Today in Masechet Shabbat, we're learning the uh, Nem Amud Aleph. That's where we're starting. The two dots, the top of the page, four lines from the top of the page, Itmar. And we're going to have three sections in today's learning. First, we're going to discuss if there's a chiluk when you wash on Shabbat, again, with waters that were warmed before Shabbat, ever, ever. If this makes a distinction, we're going to get into this today. Then we're going to learn about the Iker Gzeira. This whole thing, this Gzeirat Melchatzaot, Gzeirat Balanim, that's what we're going to actually speak about. There were steps in the Gzeira. Ever, ever, it's not like you have all your doubts, it's not the same things. As what? Your doubts, love, love. Oh, so we're going to see, that's the Makhloket, we'll see. And then the final thing we're going to speak about is additional Gzeirot that were connected to this Gzeira of washing on Shabbat or Yom Tov. We'll see, we'll get into that also later. Now, just to remember where we're holding here, we, we left off yesterday, we actually had a machloket about this. Remember, we had three shito, three tanaim. Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi, Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yudah, and Rabbi Shimon, exactly. Rabbi Yudah was the memutza. Asur, asur, mutar, mutar, Rabbi Yudah was the machriya. So let's just remember. But we so, asked me, our machriya oh, that you heard from second, Rabbi Yudah second. direct, or...? So one second, one second. So we had like this. Rabbi Meir was the most machmir. He said, on Shabbat, you're not even allowed to wash with it's cold man. water. Shower. Shower with mm-hmm. cold water. Yeah. Um, Rabbi Shimon. <laughs> exactly. You're allowed as long as it was heated before Shabbat. And we said, he's the Tana of the Mishnah, which is why the Chachamim told the Anshe Tveria, it's like the water was heated on Shabbat, so it's a so mashma. Heated before Shabbat would be mutav. He's the Tana of the Mishnah. And we had Rabbi... Rabbi Yehuda, who was... Oh, so he was the Machriya. And we said the Psak, the way we came out, follows Rabbi Yehuda, which means... Exactly. Now we're going to see, because that, that's included in the Gzeirah. Today, in the second section, we'll get into exactly what the Gzeirah is. Okay, because that was talking about showering. The Gzeirah was originally on bathing. In the Merchat Sa'ot. Bathing, Zeirah, is Taking a bath. Taking a bath. Now, mikveh is an interesting question because you have chassidim that go to the mikveh every day. They go on Shabbat too. And I actually saw, very interesting, to heat it up on Shabbat, you're not allowed. Of course not. So to go to a hot mikveh, bichlal, should be included in this gzeirah as well. Because the gzeirah is going to be, you're not even allowed to bathe in water that was heated up before Shabbat. So my did. No, but you hear that. Meaning, yeah, to go to a mikveh, nice. the water wasn't heated on Shabbat, but before it should be a problem. Bichlal. We are Sephardim, we're not allowed to. Oh, so I'm just saying is, people think, you know, Bechlal is mikveh, it's holy. This is no, also I, Nechlal. I can't it. I'm just saying we have to know. This is to be included somehow yeah. because it, it sounds like from what we've learned so, so far. So mikveh is like more miklachat. Lechaura. But nidai elaw. That's because that's the mikor. Well, that's a different story. It's not about a mitzvah, it's something else. Fine. Actually, for nida, it's better to go to the Ben Ashmachot and not in the morning of the Shabbat. That's a machloket. Some shitot even say perhaps you go during the day. It's, it gets very interesting. If, if, very if, interesting if, kulot. If, if, it's a okay. So how there is a mikveh in Shabbat? The people dipping? Before we get to mikveh, let's learn the Gemara. Itma. We, we didn't say the word mikveh in the Gemara yet. Itma. But the Gemara says like, like this. Let's see. Fourth line of the page. Zat Hashem. Tonight, what I want to learn about tonight is the, the Dud Shemesh. That's what I want to speak about tonight. It's very interesting what you brought up from Shmuel. We're going to Zat Hashem. We'll see. Mishnah Barat talks about it. We'll see. Very interesting I'm stuff. Tonight. Dud Shemesh. This whole I'm thing. Very excited. Itmar. Okay, so it's like this. Itmar. Chamin Shu Chamu Me'erev Shabbat. Okay, water was heated up before Shabbat. Now again, we know the Gezer always not allowed to take a bath. But now the question is like this. What about ever, ever? Means this idea, if you would wash one limb at a time on Shabbat, is that mutar? So Rav Amar, again, if it was heated up on Shabbat, asur. Oh. Ever, ever. I wash, I dry, Because I wash, the question really is, it's not, maybe it's not nichlal in the gzeira. So, what's that? What's the order? How you really wash ever, ever? You wash, One you limb at a time. What, you wash it, you pull it out, you wash the next one. It's not like a normal shower. It's not like a normal bath. Uh-huh. So maybe this is not nichlal in the gzeira. Uh-huh. That the next day on Shabbat, you are allowed to wash as long as it's ever, ever. You wash one limb at a time, it would be considered mutar. This is not included in the Gezerah. Shmuel says no. Limited. On Shabbat, again, if the water was heated on Shabbat, nothing to talk about. Before Shabbat, the only thing you can use on Shabbat, but ever, ever is not allowed. 
Now we're going to go three questions against Rav. Let's make to the question number one. The bright dust says like this. The water is heated up before Shabbat. Now look at the words. It says, So that sounds exactly like Shmuel. But not the whole body. So the Gemara understands the Yufta de Rav. Because what does it mean, lo kol gufo? It sounds like in any way. Now, kol gufo could mean the whole body at the same time. But it could also mean ever, ever, which will be kol gufo. So it's a kashan rav. It's mashma. The only het there is panav yadav raglav. But ever, ever, that will eventually be kol gufo. Not allowed. What's the difference? Ever, ever is most of the evarim is yadav panav raglav. No. <laughs> ever, ever would mean you're going to eventually wash the whole body. It's just one at a time. It's a kashan rav. Amalekha Rav says, no, it's not a kasha. So the that asks a kasha That's the end of the Brayta. Because he said kol gufo. Ever, ever kol Because he says you're allowed to do ever, ever, which eventually will be kol gufo. Kasha. Amalekha Rav, no, lo kol gufo bevat achat. When it says kol gufo is asur, it means at the same time it's a sur. Aval ever evel, ele ever ever. Meaning the Brayta means to say what's mutar is ever ever. But kol gufo bevat achat, that would be a sur. Ah, he says the Gemara, but vaha panav yadav raglav katayim. But what did it say is mutar in the Brayta? Panav yadav raglav. Mashma, even to do ever ever should be a sur. So the Gemara says, no, Rav says ke'en panav yadav raglav. The Brayta means to say, Anything that's like panav yadav raglav, I mean, just like panav yadav raglav, it's one limb at a time. You wash your face, you wash your hands, you wash your feet. So too, ever ever is mutar. So it's not a kashan rav. That's answer. Let's go to the second question. Tashma, another brayta, which doesn't seem to fit with rav. The brayta says clear. Lo hitiro lirchotz bechamin shulchamu me'av shabbat. Ela panav yadav raglav. Oh, now this is a strong question. The only kula is panav yadav raglav. Mashma ever ever that was warmed up before, not allowed. Maybe, but still it's ever, ever that's mean, oh, of the body, but the in, in, is, in a achinami, ke'en panav yadav raglav. Again, Rav says it could be, pshat in the bright, that is the same example, but really it's ke'en. If it's the same, i.e. it's ever, ever, it would be allowed to. think too. about it, it's really like kind of three part. Panim, the whole, the whole, mm-hmm. yadav, the azor, the raglav, the azor, it's like... Oh, the azor, the yadav. No, but shumma panav yadav raglav, omer, there's a lot of it's something else. I'm really, it's ever, ever. Right. It's included the stomach, the back. And that's according to Rav. According to Rav. But according to Shmuel, you're not allowed. Panav yadav raglav. No, but it's not yufte on Rav. It's not yet, not but yet. But it's probably it's exactly. Like the third one's going to be a kasha. But according to what you say, if, if, in Rav, it's going to lead that the person will end up showering exactly. all his this body. Exactly, this is nichlan gzera, exactly. Oh no, Rav. end up showering all his body. Rav is the mekil. He's the mekil. Rav he holds, no, he's mekil. But it's going to end up that the oh, person. Oh, 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 I hear, I hear. That's why Shmuel. If you're making a kula here. That's why Shmuel. Is that why Shmuel don't mention that? So, okay. We'll end up that they're just going to end up. It's not like the potter and all the shot and the kalachet and the vatachat. It's different. So you say ever, ever. Okay, ever, ever. Okay, ever, ever. So you end, you're going to end up that you're going to take okay. a kula. Okay. That's, that's why Shmuel says as a so. Okay. Meaning Shmuel says, once you start being mekil in that regard, it's going to eventually lead to something like taking a shower, which is the gzera, perhaps, at least according to Rav So how do we compare right. ever, ever to keheni and av panavagla? So Rav learns that that's, it, it's different than taking a shower, taking a bath, but mele, it's not nichla and the it's gzera. Different. Different. Shmuel says, no, it's, it's, it's similar, it's going to be a problem. Okay, let's go ahead. Tanya kavate de Shmuel. So the Gemara says, okay, but we have a brayta that clearly says like Shmuel. Only panav yadav raglav, because it says chamin shu chamu mi erev Shabbat lemacha ochetz b'hen panav yadav raglav, aval lo kol gufo ever ever. Now this is knockout. I mean, this one clearly it says proof to Shmuel. Now the Gemara does not say here. Sorry, let's just finish off the brayta. Ve'en tzayich lomar chamin shu chamu biyom tov. And certainly, if the water was heated up on Yom Tov, it's going to be a sur to shower with that. Meaning, this is where it was heated before the Shabbat. You're not allowed to wash gufo. You're only allowed to wash panav yadav raglav. But if it was heated up on the Yom Tov itself, for sure it's a sur. Why? Remember, why is it for sure a sur? Oh. So yesterday we said, because even according to Beit Hillel, you're allowed to heat up water on Yom Tov for panav yadav raglav. That's because panav yadav raglav is shove l'chol nefesh. Maza shove v'chol nefesh is their svara was mitoch mitoch she itiru l'ochel nefesh itiru gam, but it has to be something that's like ochel nefesh. 
meaning everyone has to eat. So everyone washes panav yadav raglav, but it used to be not everybody showered every day. So memele, they wouldn't allow you to take a bath or a shower, or ever ever the whole body, because that's not considered shogun for method. Exactly. To warm up according to Beit Hillel. Exactly. Now, by the way, this brings us to, you could argue today, a contradiction. Ayom, not contradiction. Ayom, people do shower every day. So you could argue, the Chaura and the Chaura talk about this perhaps, but the Chaura, one could definitely say, Ayom is Shova Lechol Nefesh. This is, by the way, Shova Lechol Nefesh brings in cigarettes, it brings in a lot of things. Yes. That become oh, is that nefesh. considered ochel nefesh because it's shova lechol nefesh not big, but showering the chalva big right? big different as Narav said because really a mezera eta be 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 bat houses babay is a bit better kind that's we're gonna get to also bezat Hashem so anyways get to what we just had is a machloket Rav and Shmuel we brought a breakdown that supports Shmuel ever ever kol gufo is not mutar okay. nah, only only even though it's heated up before Shabbat certainly heated up on Yom Tov not allowed. Only Panav Now, Raba had a different Yirsa in the Shita of Rav. Okay, the first version of Rav, the, the Yirsa Yishona of Rav was, Ever Ever is Mutav. You're allowed to wash Ever Ever. Raba had a different Yirsa, Yirsa Shniya, in the, in the Shita of Rav. Exactly, he had a different tradition, a different Mesorah, what Rav held. Raba Matnila la Hashmaita de Rav, Bahalishna. He taught Rav Shita a little bit differently. He taught like this. He was more, even more lenient, more mekil. He said, "Chamin shul chamu be'erev me'erev Shabbat lemachar amar Rav ochetz b'hem kol gufo u'meshayer ever echad." Now, what does that mean? Is the leniency of Rav is it was warmed up before Shabbat? You can wash your whole body as long as you don't wash one ever. In the first way we learned in Rav, keep one arm out and then wash your whole body like normal. Take a shower like normal, no problem. Now this is much more of a kula. The first kula, the first way we learn Rav is one limb, the next limb, the next limb, which is not a normal way to shower. But now what we're saying is, is that you can wash your whole body karagil as long as you don't wash one ever. So this version of Rabba's Hezber of Rav is much more mekil. Okay. So the Gemara says the problem with this it doesn't fit with the bright doubt we brought before. The bright doubt we brought before clearly don't hold of this because it says, let's say the first bright doubt we quoted, which was Akasha. The first one was, Chamin Jeho Chamu Me'erev Shabbat, Lemacha Ochetz Ba'en Panav Yadav Raglav, Ava Lo Kol Gufo. Lo Kol Gufo, how are you going to fit into that, this Shita? Lama Lo Kol Gufo. Lo Kol Gufo, he washed all his body, but not, not everything. So it's very difficult to read. So here the Gemara says, Eteve Kol Hani Tiyufta. So the Gemara asks, all of these bright out we quoted before, they don't seem to go with this for sure. And the Gemara says, this is, this, this, this Girsa of Rav, this Nusach of Rav, this is Tiyufta, knocked out. It doesn't make sense. It's a difficult it Girsa of Rav. Rejected. Rejected, rejected. It is, this we say Tiyufta. The first we didn't say Tiyufta, by the way. The first we said it, there's a bright that supports Shmuel, but we didn't say Tiyufta. But this one, we say Tiyufta too. So now the Gemara says, very interesting story. We know, Rashi explains here, Rabbah was the Rosh HaYeshiva, and Rav Yosef, who was, is Bar Plukta, by the way, he took over after Rabbah passed away. Rav Yosef took over as the Rosh HaYeshiva. Rabbah. But Rabbah was this, Rabbah. the Rabbi of uh, Abaye, right? Exactly. Rabbah was the uncle and Rabbi of Abaye. He adopted Abaye, actually, took, raised him, um, brought him up, because his father passed away, which was his, his brother. And Rabbah was the Rosh HaYeshiva. When Rabbah passed away, Rav Yosef took over as the Rosh HaYeshiva. So Rav Yosef asked Abaye, what was the minhag of Rabbah? It means Rav Yosef wanted to know, was Rabbah noheg like this kula that he just quoted? Meaning, was he noheg, mayim shuchamu me'erev Shabbat, you're allowed to shower, like he said, Rav held, chutz me'ev echad. Probably not. But he wanted to know. Rav Yosef asked Abaye, what did your uncle used to do? But you saw already Tufta. Why you can't ask him? Oh, so let's see, let's see. Amalir of Yosef, excellent. Amalir of Yosef, Because Rabbi. we also learned in Hag Betav, ma. We... So let's see, let's see. No, it, 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 it's saying good. We said to Yufta. It's a Yufta already. Why are you repeating the question? And, right. I mean. Amalir of Yosef, Labai. So Rav Yosef turned to Abai. Again, Abai was the Talmud of Rabbah, and Rav Yosef was the Barplukta of Rabbah. So Rav Yosef Bar wanted. Barplukta. Barplukta is like the. Chole Kalam. It's Kmo Chavruta. It means. 
the people that were always arguing. Like, oh, bet oh, it's like Bar Plukta. Avid Shmuel is Bar Plukta. means they were the ones that were, it was like the Chavuta, exactly. Amr Rav Yosef Labaya, Rav Yosef said to Abaye, Rabba Mika Avid Kishvate de Rav. Did Rabba Paskin like the Psak of Rav? Meaning, did Rabba say you're allowed to shower on Shabbat with water heated before? If you leave one limb out, did he, was he make you like this Psak? So Amr Le, Abaye said back to Rav Yosef, Lo Yadana. I don't know. Is that I don't know? So they go, wait a second. What kind of a question was this in the first place? Like Yochev is just saying, what was. Mighty, mighty Baile, what, what's the Shaila? What was, what was Rav Yosef asking Abaye? Pshita de lo avid de ha Of course he didn't pass him like this because itutav is tiufta. We just refuted this. Of course he's not going to pass him like a shita that was knocked out. So the Gemara answers, lo shmia le. Rabba didn't hear the kashas. Meaning, Rav Yosef knew that Rabba didn't hear the pirchas on his shita of Rav. So maybe he continued with the shita of Rav. He wasn't sure. Meaning, Rab, uh, Rav Yosef knew that Rabbah didn't hear those who had refuted the shita, was made a tiyufta against his shita, so maybe he continued to follow. So the Gemara says, okay, but if that's true, the ilo shmiyale, if Rabbah didn't hear the kashas against his nusach of Rav, so then vadayavid, for sure he followed Rav. Now why would he for sure follow Rav? So we know we learned this back on Chavbet. We have a rule that Rabba always follows Rav over Shmuel besides three places. Remember we learned that rule? Zocher? Wow, I'd be surprised. You remember what the three places are? I'll be very impressed if you remember. That was a very long time ago. Rabba always follows Rav, chutz me three places. What are the three places? I'll give you one of them. Maybe you'll remember the rest. One of them is l'hadlik miner l'ner. On, on, on Hanukkah. Remember, that was the sugya over there. Nechon. Uh, Lake Miner is Bizui Mitzvah. Nechon. We spoke about that. What were the other two? Nechon. Anybody Nechon. remember the other two? Where he doesn't Nechon. pass in like Rav, he pass in like Shmuel over Rav. Anybody Nechon. remember? Lake Miner is Bizui Mitzvah. That's what Rabbi said. Rabbi always pass in like Rav over Shmuel besides for three places. One of them is Lad Lake Miner Lener. What's the other two places? What was it? I wasn't respectful, really. Ah, uh, one of them was respectful. Okay, one of them is no to tzitzit, and one of them is no to davar no mitkaven. Those were the two other. Uh, the other one was to drag a bench in the dirt. So, it's machlok, to be passing like Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Yehuda. So, passing like Shmuel and not like uh, Rav. And the third one was Lasia to remove tzitzit mi beged yashan and to put it on. Uh, Let's on a, say, but it also was if, if on a new beged. That was the other example. And if it's like a, you can mix wool and linen, right? If the tzitzit is like a, that wasn't the or, I mean that was part of the sugya. But the three ge- examples were is to remove tzitzit from an old beged and put on a new beged, to light miner liner and to drag a bench, which is the varshe no mitkaven because it might make a charitz. Let's see. So says the Gemara. If Rabbah didn't hear the pircha. Abaye said, Kol mili demar, mar means master. All the matters my master means Rabba did, like Rav. Bar mehani tlat David kishmuel. Besides three examples that he followed Shmuel, which were matilin mi beged le beged. You could take tzitzit from one beged, the old one, to a new one. O madlikin miner l'ner, and you could light from one candle to another. Remember, we had a whole sugya about bizoy mitzvah. Ve'alacha ko Rabbi Shimon begrira, and we pass in the Rabbi Shimon that it's davar she'no mitkaven. It might make a charitz. You're allowed to drag it in the dirt. So says the Gemara. If Rabba never heard the pircha on his Hezber of Rav, of course he would follow Rav. So what was Rav Yosef asking Abaye? Well, again, again, if Rabba did If Rabba have... never heard the Pircha against his version of Rav, so for sure he followed Rav. So why is it even a cash? Why was Rav Yosef even asking Abaye, did Rabba follow Rav? He always followed Rav. Because maybe Rav changed his mind. Maybe Rav was... Maybe he was he, Jose? He, 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 yeah. Maybe, but we don't know that he did, so why would we assume that? It was a Psak. That Rabba held that was the psak of uh, Rabba held that was a psak of Rav. So why would he change if he always follows Rav? That's the so the Gemara answers. Rav Avid. Whenever Rav had a chumra, Rabba would follow that chumra. Rav Lo Avid. But like the leniencies, he didn't follow. Not necessarily. Here it's a kula to shower with one limb out on Shabbat. It's a kula. So this is now we're re- I thought, now we're recreating the rule. Like, like Rav Ovadia used to be mekel for the people. No, la'am aretz. Right. But on himself he was always mechmer. Mm-hmm. 
So in this yes. case, we're coming out is that Raba always followed the Chumrot of Rav, but not necessarily the Kulot of Rav. So this is a Kula. So that, therefore, if Yosef was asking Abaye, did he pass him like this Kula of Rav? And that he didn't know the answer to. All right, yalla, let's go ahead now, Chavin. Now we're going to get into this original Gzera. Now we're going to see, before, we're going to do a little section, we'll see afterwards, that there were actually steps in history. Legabe this Gzera. This Gzera of Merchatzaot, it was essentially over a course of, a, it sounds like, a period of time, because the Chachamim saw people were acting in ways that were not right. But the Gzera became, it wasn't one Gzera at the same time, but it was like in steps. That's what we're going to see. Very interesting. We're going to see over here, it's an example where the Chachamim saw there's a problem and they instituted. But then they saw the problem continue, so they made a new Takana. That's what we're going to get into and right this now. Is also in, steps. in the end, in the end. But it wasn't like one time Gzera and covered everything. It was steps and they saw people weren't still doing what they need to, so they continued. Because some people sometimes can just can't adjust mm -hmm. to the Gzera. Right. But what we, the, before that, what we're going to see... We're going to see at the end. But the point is, this bright hour about to quote was in the middle of the Takanot. Now, let me just speak this out. Originally, before the Gzera of Merchatzaot, you could, take, to take, you could a take a shower in hot water that was warmed up before Shabbat. You understand? It was, they prohibited that, so you're not allowed to shower anymore, but you are allowed to do Zaya. Zaya means you go in the bathhouse. Schwitz. It was a very steamy place. Schwitz. Schwitz. That was still allowed. Okay, so you weren't allowed to shower anymore in hot water, but you were allowed to go in the Schwitz, in the sauna, which was in the bathhouse. The bathhouse is used to have in it also, it was a very steamy area. So just to understand this next piece, the way the bathhouses were set up, this is how Rashi seems to learn is, you had the bathhouse, which is the area where there was a pool, and people would go in. Underneath it, in the basement, there was fire and coals, things of that nature. Now, if they, between the fire and the water, there was some sort of a vent, ventilation system, and the heat would go up and it would heat up the waters. Mm -hmm. Now, on Shabbat, after the Gzeirah, you're not allowed to sh bathe anymore, right? So, you're not allowed to bathe on Shabbat anymore, but you're allowed to go in for Zeirah. Now, what about Motzei Shabbat? So, Motzei Shabbat is like this. We're going to see in this bright, uh, if they closed the ventilation system on Sh before Shabbat, they closed it. So, that means that the water was not heated on Shabbat, Rather, whatever heat is in that water was from before Shabbat. You still can't bathe because we're holding in the second step of the Gzera. Bathing is asu. Fine. But immediately after Shabbat, you'd be allowed to bathe. Because you don't have to wait Kedesh Yasu because whatever it heat, it, it Shabbat. wasn't warmed up on Shabbat. Now, if it wasn't closed, so then the Chachamim made a Gzera, or worry, because so long as it's open, you might want to stir the coals underneath in order to heat the water up more. So the point we're going to say here is, if the ventilation was closed, Erev Shabbat, that means whatever heat is in this water was before Shabbat. You can't bathe on Shabbat, but you could bathe. Again, this is after the first level of the Gzeirah, before the second, which we'll get to after. Just to be clear, let's see that inside now. So says the Gemara, says the Brayta, Tanu Abanan. Merchatz shepakekune kavav me'erev Shabbat. If you have a merchatz and a kavav was the vent, they closed the vent before Shabbat. So that means whatever heat, there's no heat coming through. Whatever heat is in that water was from Erev Shabbat, not on Shabbat itself. Now again, this is in the step of the Gzeira, you're not allowed to bathe. But after Shabbat you could bathe. So le motzei Shabbat ochetz bo miyad. On motzei Shabbat, you're allowed to bathe immediately, says Rashi, and we don't have to wait Kedei Shiyasu. Usually, if there was some sort of a melacha, or some sort of an issue done on Shabbat, what's the halacha? You have to wait enough time that that melacha could have been done on Motzei Shabbat. But since you closed the ventilation before Shabbat, nothing was done on Shabbat, you could take a bath immediately after Shabbat is over. Can you repeat over there? Sure. Why is there a problem? What's going to be a problem? Like this. The, the, this is in the state, that's why it's a little confusing because there was a few st steps here. So this is in the step where they prohibited bathing, but you were allowed to go in for Zaya. Yes. But the Zaya is also with some... 
kind of like steam, steam sauna sauna circulation of something you know sauna exactly well that was just natural i guess it was such a hot place that it caused there to be steam no, no, I mean, but the heat came from the, for the, for the so basement. they okay but they closed it that's that's the point here okay. they closed the ventilation now why is that important because if they didn't close so, the ventilation so it's like this not exactly <laughs> what happens is now is like this if they didn't close it we have a gzera. the gzera is this is how the we'll see it's brought down but they might end up stoking the coals, but if they went and did the right thing, which is they closed the ventilation before Shabbat. Okay. So whatever heat is in that water, in the was from Erev Shabbat, okay. not on Shabbat itself, okay. you could take a bath in that immediately on Motzei Shabbat. You don't have to wait Kedesh Yasu. What's Kedesh Yasu? Usually Kedesh Yasu means, and there's a lot of examples, if there was some sort of a melacha done on Shabbat, you have to wait the amount of time that it would take on Motzei Shabbat for that melacha to be done. Here, since it wasn't done on Shabbat and it was closed, there's no issue, you can take a bath immediately after Shabbat is over. I talk Kedesh Yasu. I don't understand this thing with Kedesh Yasu. Yeah. I talk Kedesh Yasu, it's the time that you spend during Shabbat to make the Melacha. You took you two hours to cook, you have to wait two hours. I told them what's To do it, however long it takes. It, already that what you spend already. Yeah, whatever the Melacha takes. Yeah, whatever, however long it takes to do that melacha, exactly. Lechaorah, that's what it means. Yeah. So let's say Shabbat ends at 9. You yeah. cannot use the water until 11. If you close it, that's what we're saying, the chidush is, it's, you could take a shower and a bath immediately. That's it, that's if you close it, it's, yeah. it's the, if you it's close the, it's the it's status move on. of the gzerot right now. Yeah, that's if the point. If you close exactly. it, very you simple. Did good. You, did good. you did right. This is in the first step, exactly. We're going to see in a minute. I'll if you that. close, it's very simple, right? Because Take a bath immediately after Shabbat, no problem. The chidush is, that's because you did it right. But if you didn't, you'd have to wait some time on Motzei Shabbat because you were over on heating well, the water on Shabbat. The, 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 if you yeah. left the ventilation open, exactly. Okay. That's going to be the problem. But, but we said not. You closed it. It wasn't heated on Shabbat. Motzei Shabbat, you could shave immediately. No problem. Yeah, no good. Problem. Fine. So far, so good. Let's continue. Um, now, by the way, in this step, where we're holding, again, just to be clear, this was after the first step of the Gzeira. So Zeya was Mutav. So they were allowed to go in, even on Shabbat, to do Zeya. Yes. Just be clear, okay. fine. Pakekune Kavav Me'erev Yom Tov. Now, in a similar way, if they closed up the ventilation on Erev Yom Tov, so lemachar an yom tov nichnas umezia. They were allowed to go in and do zeya. Now tosvot tov is very important over here. It's the same thing with Shabbat. This is not unique to yom tov because in this step of the gzera, on Shabbat or yom tov, you're not allowed to wash, but you are allowed to mezia. So really, this is for both Shabbat and yom tov. This was allowed to be done. But was it we'll understand. Yom tov? It's not. That's what tosvot. No, means. no. The, the, the next step. Ah, so one second. Now, you're not allowed to take a bath in the in the bathhouse area, but you could go in after the zea, after the shvitz. You could take a shower outside. Take a shower outside. Now, this gets into a machlok at Rashi and Tosfot. Rashi learned it means you could take a warm shower outside. Tosfot has a bit of an issue with that because we already said that we paskin like. Abiyuda and Abiyuda says ah. you're not allowed to take a warm shower even with Mayim Shuchamu Me'erev Shabbat and Erev Yom Tov. So Tosvot says maybe there's a chiluk between Shabbat and Yom Tov, but he doesn't like Rashi's pshat. So Tosvot actually learns it means you can wash outside with cold water. That's what Tosvot but learns. What's the chidush? Cold water is no chidush to wash. Oh, so that's what he's saying is we could only be with cold water. But the point that we're making here is it has to be beveit achitzon. The shower has to be not in the place of the bathhouse. Beit HaChitzon means an outer so area. Why an outer Russia. area? Why is that important? Because, because if you shower in the inner area, even if it's mutar, people will see and they'll think you took a bath there yes. and that will be a marta'ay and create an issue for people. So like the point is that you have to, you could schwitz at this step in the gzera, but then you have to go outside to take a shower. Now it's a machlok at Rishonim. Is it warm water? Is it cold water? That's in the Rishonim. Fine. It's worked better with Russia, I think so. Why? Because it's uh, you don't you don't have any issue that people are gonna take you using hot water on Shabbat at all. I hear you take it outside, but uh, as long as it's outside. If it's sonen, what's the what's the chiddush? Well, the chiddush is even though it's sonen, it has to be done outside. Don't take a shower inside. But I'm not to take in sonen and even in Shabbat. The problem is, you walk outside, your hair is wet. People are gonna say, oh, he went to the he went to take a bathhouse. He went to the bathhouse, which is asu. So the gzera could still be meaning. However you learn in the Rishonim, it has to be done outside. 
so that it's clear that you didn't go to the bathhouse. That's the point. Okay. But if you want to take a shower in Yom Tov, <clears throat> if you went to the bathhouse for the Zaya, Zaya, exactly. After that, he went. But but outside, meaning no, that's, that's what Yochai was just referencing. Perhaps there's a chiluk between your house and the bathhouse. This probably would be where this Beit Achitzon, because it's not exactly here. Now just keep in mind, this is in the second step of the Gzeirah. We're going to get to in a minute. There was another step, so we'll see later. But yeah. I don't understand. What do you not One understand? Second. If you, you went to the sauna, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then it's, it's start to sweat. Sweat. And you Take a shower. But only outside. Why only outside? Because if he takes a shower inside and he walks outside with his hair wet, people are going to say, oh, you're allowed to go to the bathhouse on Shabbat. You're allowed to on Yom Tov. What? And outside. Bachutz is, is, is a shower station over there. And that's mutah. People know you didn't go to the bathhouse. You didn't take a bath. And may, maybe there's no hot, hot water outside. But it's like... Yeah, that's a machlok at Vishonim. Exactly. Maybe it's, it's not it's maybe it's accessible hot water outside. Yeah, okay, I hear. That's, yeah. a, that's a machlok at Vishonim. But the point is, then you avoid the Iker Gzeira. Okay, said. Now, Amr Rav Yehuda Ma'aseh B'mechad Shah B'nei Brak. Rav Yehuda says there was a story in the bathhouse of B'nei Brak. You know, it's amazing. He's talking about B'nei Brak, right? Uh -huh. Any of these uh, Yemach Shemam that are talking about how they have a claim to Eretz Yisrael. We were talking about B'nei Brak before Islam became a religion. You understand that? Yeah. Islam didn't exist when we are talking about B'nei Brak. <laughs> Yavne. I'm just saying, and this is just one of the thousands of examples. Islam wasn't a thing till the six, what, six something or whatever it 1600 was. 1600 years ago. B'nai Brak, we're talking about 2000 years ago. And they have a claim to Eretz Yisrael as if there's some cheshbon in there. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, I'm Rav Yehuda. Ma'aseh b'mechat she b'nai Brak. So the, there was a story in the Merchatz of B'nei Brak, Shepakekune Kavav Me'erav Yom Tov. Okay, they, they closed up the vents before Yom Tov, and the Machar Nechnas, Rabbi Elazar ben Azar, Rabbi Akiva, so the great Chachamim, went, they ziubo, like we said, in the second step of the Gzeirah was Mutal, V'yatzu v'nishtatfu b'veit ha'chitzon. Now again, it depends on who you learn like, but they took a shower outside, mm -hmm. not inside, because people shouldn't think they took a bath. But they did even an extra step. It's like Gawuf Katum. That's exactly. They covered the bath area of the hot water with Nisarim, so that nobody will suspect that they took a bath there. You don't even need to cover the bath area with boards. That's not necessary. Meaning, all it needs to be done is, is you shower outside, that's already sufficient, like we said. Now, the Brayta continues and says like this, and we'll explain this more later, when the people who did Avera increased, they even said it's Asur to walk through, to walk through, which means that we had these large bathhouses, people would, would walk through it, they wouldn't necessarily schwitz. But even to walk through it, they assert it. Why did they even assert it to walk through? Because once you walk through, okay, you might end up schwitz, and people will start to think that's even permitted. I said it wrong. Walking through is acceptable. They assert it to go in for zeya. That's what it was. It means they prohibited zeya even in these large bathhouses. But you were allowed to walk through as long as you were not mezia, as long as you did not schwitz. Now we're going to explain exactly what happened here. But what happened is, there seems to be three things we're about to discuss. There's bathing, there's zeya, and then there's just walking through. It's gonna be three stages in the gzeira. So what we just said was, first they prohibited bathing, then zeya, and then we're gonna see even just to walk through, perhaps became an issue, which we'll get to now. So let's see. My over Avera means, what was the Avera? What happened over here that the Chachami made Gzerot? So now we're going to see there were stages in the Gzerot. Let's see. Now this is before any of the Gzerot. Originally, they washed themselves with water that was warm before Shabbat. Remember, on a Doraita level, no problem. It was warm before Shabbat. Face value, mutav. That's what they used to do. Itchilu abalanim laachem b'Shabbat veomrim me'erev Shabbat uchamu. So what ended up happening was you had bathhouse attendants, the balanim. We spoke about this yesterday. This is the first stage, which was called gzerat ha'merchatzaot or gzerat balanim. 
the bathhouse attendants would warm up the water on Shabbat. And they were a, a Ram, Ramaut, because really they warmed it up on Shabbat. They said it was warmed up before Shabbat. So the Chachamim saw what they were doing. Some of the Rishonim say they were Goyim, actually. It's very interesting. Some of the before Shemir say there wasn't Jews we're talking about. It's Jews. How can you make a for Jews that are doing so obviously wrong? It's your So therefore. Another thing, Meaning they set it up before. So there's different ways to learn what the issue was exactly, but however you learn, they were doing something on Shabbat that they shouldn't have been doing in terms of heating up the water, and they claimed it was done before Shabbat. That's the... Okay, so that's stage one. Stage two, Asue Tachamin, the Chachamim came and they said, you're not allowed to take a shower, a bath in hot water. But they said, okay, the, the bathhouse could still be used for Zeya. It means you want to come in for a Schwitz, it's still Muta. Problem is, people would go in, they would take a bath, and when they walk out all, ah, we just, we just took a Schwitz. So then the Chachamim realized even to do Zayah is a problem because it's leading to a problem. So Asu Lahenet HaZayah, they prohibited even the Zayah. V'itiru Chamei Teveria. We spoke about this last couple days. They still were Matir Chamei Teveria. Now why did they Matir Chamei Teveria? Because, exactly, because we said, Be'ikr, Toldot Ha'or is Asur Da'orait, but Toldot Ha'chama, it's only a Gzeira. So they still said, you could go to Chamei Teveria, it's not a problem. And Malechatot. Right. Yeah. There's no gzera. Fine. Problem is, wow. the way I understand it is, you have the hot springs, but Mistama next door, you also have a bathhouse. It's right there. So a guy goes in, he comes out all wet. Ah, where are you going to the. I went to Chamei Teveria. Okay, that creates a problem. So then, Chamei Teveria. So then the Chachamim even added, you're not allowed to go to Chamei Teveria. No hot water. Now this is a very strong step, because now the only thing you're allowed to bathe in is cold water. So they saw, They saw, this is a gzera, meaning this is too much, that they're not even allowed to wash in, in the hot springs, which is completely, it's very removed from the original gzera. So then the Chachamim took a step back. Interesting. Meaning initially they were so s serious about it, only cold water. And then it said, people can't withstand this. But could be the malach. It could be malach. When you teach somebody lesson, you give him big punishment, but you don't really mean it. You want to learn the lesson. So you know what? Okay, I take it out there. Then I appreciate very hard. I'm not gonna <laughs> right, Mestam, uh, this was for the Hamon Am, we're talking about. We weren't doing it for four people. Ma, this was for the No, but he checked the people. Wow, no Hamid Vera, no, wow. And then they gave it back, and then they felt good about it. Yeah, that sounds like a good It's shot. the same idea like the, the story. I know, it's beautiful. So in the end, he tiru lahem chamei tveria. So they matir chamei tveria again, because it's toldot ha-chama, and not a-or, v'zeya b'mkoma u-medet. But the isor of zeya remained in its place. Okay, so Basof, what happened? Let's just speak out for a second. Let's go through the three steps. Batchila, they were even allowed to bathe in hot water. Again, obviously, Shochamul of Shabbat, fine. Then they saw people were heating up the water on Shabbat. So they said, no hot water, but Zayah's mutav. They saw people using Zayah and also the hot water. So they said, even Zayah's asur, Chamei Tveria's mutav. They saw people going to the bathhouse saying it was Chamei Tveria. They even asur there. They even oh, they were only matir tzonen. But then they took a step back and Chamei Tveria is mutar. Now, what about hot water? Chutz means meaning besides that. So sounds like asu. I mean, the only bath you could take is cold. That's what it would come out from this on Shabbat. That's what it seemed to come out. Okay. There is a, 
on the roads you see many many um, intersections and lights why no before that there was no lights right why I hear, I hear. Because there was, the drivers were, you know, much more careful. Yeah. And within the years, there was more car accidents and more issues, and people violated the, the roads. So there is a more, you know. I just tell you what, what, what the, I saw. Enforcement. If you see this book, you could look. It says at the end of everything, the halakha, very short. Uh -huh. The only thing I'm not sure is for, is he quotes the Mishnah Brura, so it could be Rabbi Vadius You have to look it up. So you have to look it up. But he says, very interesting, he says, the halakha, Remember we learned yesterday. Only if the water is in the ground. If they moved it to a kli, that would be asu, that's the Torah Shita. Well, the problem is because people will think it was from the fire and then add cold water, that would be an issue. Meaning because... I wonder if it's really that hot. i never been there. Me neither. That's the Mishnah Bura. Now, I don't know if that's Nogea for Sfaradim also. I don't know. I have to look it up. But the Mishnah Bura says, we don't even take cold showers on Shabbat. That's what he says. That's what he says. I usually don't take showers on Shabbat. Even cold showers, that's the Minhag. Now, I look it up. Only so it could be from different reasons. Oh, that's true. That's also true. That's that's probably the case. That's, that's what true. I do in Yom Tov. Only, only cold. So this is for Shabbat, right? Only cold, but I'm tapping on my hair. Yom Tov, we have more of a leniency, Mr. Yeah. But also Shabbat the whole nefesh. No, but you hear, Yom Tov, we have the the heter of Shabbat the whole nefesh, meaning once you say Panav Yadav Raglav is mutar because so Shabbat. The same way you're doing no, no, no. You have to be careful with schita. But the point is that, assuming that you don't have those issues, there's more leniency on Yom Tov than Shabbat. We could hear that meaning naturally. Amar <laughs> Rav, let's finish up here. Rav says like this: I man de avar ad rabanan. Somebody that's over on the right is for sure an avarian. But if somebody even is over on the rabanan, shari le mikre le avayana. You're allowed to call him an avayan. You're allowed to call him a sinner. You understand? It's a big deal. You go to somebody, you call him a sinner. It's, it's not a simple thing. It's a shonara. It's bad. But even if he's over in the Rabbanans, you're also allowed to call him an avaryan. I saw Mefarshim speak out here. The only reason you're allowed to do this is so that people see it's wrong and they don't follow in his ways. So even if he's only being over in the Rabbanan, we have to also enforce. People know this is wrong. We can't do this. Few, few, few basic learning. Chafetz Chaim says, "I saw. I brought down over here. I tell you, it's very interesting what he says. It's important to note just the this five idea. Things you have to. You know, let's just finish, before we see it. One second. Come on. So he says, where, where do we see this idea? So turn to Mem Mudbet Ki Aitana. It's like the bright dust. Because what did the bright dust say? Ovre Avera. When they started, the Ovre Avera started to do this. So then they added more. Ovre Avera. We're talking about these are Xerot Rabbanan. Means people were doing things that the Rabbanan had asserted, and the Brayta calls them Avaryan. So therefore, you see, you could call somebody an Avaryan. It's a fitting title, even if it's not Isure Doraita. Now, oh, it's not so simple. So he that says like this. Uh, wait, but he said Zerod the Rabbanan are more chamur than Zerod the So that's that's true. Isure Doraita. He says, Vedafka, this is the words of the Chafetz Chaim. Vedafka kishavar ala Yisu kama pamim, u parak me alav ol yer at shamaim, u metzva leganoto. It's only if he's actively going against the mitzvot, the, the Rabbanan even, o shavar ala Yisu be pirsum. I don't think we're talking about somebody that's not religious, because he doesn't know in the first place to not do these things. We're talking about somebody <laughs> saying, if somebody doesn't know better, so to, okay, so maybe that's different. I'm saying if you have a stam guy who grows up in America, he's nothing to do with Torah and mitzvot. He doesn't know anything. Just saying. No, he, he, <clears> even <throat> if you know, but you can come to claim a guy like to call him a variant. Exactly. What are you going to accomplish with that? Exactly. He's, I'm talking about people that keep Torah and mitzvot, represent exactly. Torah and exactly. mitzvot, exactly. and do the avera publicly. Exactly. And repeat it, the sharp nefesh, and you know what he's doing exactly. That's a big problem. But Says also, you give, give five I know, I know, state, right, right, you know, you can't just... Right, you, right, know, right. you can't throw this around easy. You have to see by your own eyes, make sure it's real avera, mm -hmm. and do that with no interest of, because it's your competition or anything like that. And only, the fourth one is only if you want to mark him for other people to do the scenes. So five steps, it's not so easy to say. Exactly, exactly. Or something like that. But there and then all that. To call people a varyanim, it's not an easy thing. That's the point. It's not... Rasha, uh, <laughs> 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 
you know, to call somebody Rasha, even if they're what they're going to come today, mm-hmm. <laughs> don't call nobody. Exactly. Unless it's Chalif Shalom, like people that Meruim ala Torah, Rotsim Zgot Eshivot, Mutatim Dachamim. זה באמת, זה ערב רב, חס ושלום, אבל אנשים... מסכים, אני אגיד. מה אתם רואים לדוגו את זה? יאללה, חבר'ה, let's go. רגע לפני שפר. אמבטיות, אמבטיות של הכרכים. So we said at the end of the brighta, that the last step was like this. They said the large bath houses, מטייל בהן ואינו חושש. You're not allowed to go in them to שוויץ, but you are allowed to walk through them. They used to have these large bath houses. It was like an open area to walk. You're allowed to walk through them because we're not worried you're going to schwitz, it's not a problem. There's no, there's no strong okay. steam over there oh. to schwitz. So, Amar Rava, Rava explains, what? What is exactly Ambat Yoshika? It means large bath houses. Okay. I, I understand it's like a spa. Like a spa, large area, people would walk through, not just for that, it was just a nice place to walk. That was mutar because we're not worried you're going to go and schwitz, it's just a nice place to walk. Amar Rava, Dafka Kachin, that's only if it's the large ones, Kachin were the large city, so it was a big area. Ava Dikfarim, but if it's the small ones in the villages, lo. My time, Akiva de Zotrin, since they're small, Nafish Hivlayu, means when it's a smaller area, the steam is much stronger, and then there's two ways to look at this. Either the Pshat is, it's more likely you're actually going to end up sweating, and that's a problem, or even if people see you going in, they'll just assume you're going in to sweat, and therefore, Bichlal and the smaller ones, you're not allowed to go in all together because there's that issue of sweating, as opposed to the large ones, we're not worried, you're just going to walk through, and that's okay. Tanu Abana, let's finish up the last piece here. Tanu Abana, says the bright top. Now this really is a new, a new point, but it's connected to this Gzeira about not um, warming up water um, on Shabbat or before Shabbat. Tanu Abana, mitchamem adam keneged ha-medura v'yotzeo mishtatef b'tzone. You're allowed to go and warm yourself up near the medura, the bonfire, or the large fire on Shabbat. V'yotzeo mishtatef b'tzone. And then you could go out and take a cold shower after. But what you're not allowed to do, very interesting, is first take a cold shower and then warm yourself up by the fire. Because then the water that's on you gets warmed up. And then, as Rashi learns over here, is that this is a little bit like, it's like warming up water on Shabbat, which you're not allowed to do. So that would be, Rashi says, uh, Slicha Rashi says, ah, Slicha Tosvot, sorry. Tosvot says, it's Dome. If you look at Tosvot, the top one, Mefaresh Riva, de Dome Kerochetz be Mayim Chamin, via Bola Chem Chamin le Chotz Gufo. The, the top Tosvot, it's similar to washing in warm water, and then he might warm up water and wash his body on Shabbat. This is like an extension of the Gzera. You're not allowed to wash in warm water. If you warm yourself up when you're wet by the fire, the water gets warm, and you might end up warming up water, which is part of the gzera. It's not gzera le gzera. Does sound like it, but Rat Tosfot says v'yavol achem chamin lechot gufo. You might end up warming up water itself. But we say anyway, he's not allowed to <clears throat> stand in front of the bonfire to get dry or warm himself up after they took a shower, right? Mm-hmm. No. So That's now I'm not v'yavol. Oh. To warm up the water, to wash my body? A different time, a different time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All of these things, they're like, Chazal make like a boundaries for things so that you don't end up. Because they understood is that people see something or people do something and then they do another thing. It, it leads naturally. So that's what they said. You're not allowed to go to the shower and then the bonfire. But it's, yeah. you know what surprised me? That they transgress all of those klalim, chukim. Yeah, no, you know, like, they did this. No, now they do that. They, yeah. Like, I, I'm, I wonder myself, like, you know, why? What's that? Uh, what, what is it? Like, how did they have all the things? Like, they knew what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. They were doing it. People think. They were doing it. They were doing it. Even if they were doing it, they were doing it. They were doing it. Shema, we just talked about it. In, in Bavel, the Jews were marrying Goyim, right? We think that, like, you know, look back, they were all Gdolei Ador. It's not true, meaning... There were tzadikim and b'nei Torah and, and chassidim v'chulei, but there was also hamon am that they, they were married. In, in Galut Bavel, in Persia, Ezra and Sofer had to separate Jews from their non-Jewish wives. And they listened to him. And they eventually listened, but the point is that, that they fell so much. You understand, it was not a... We look back and we think to ourselves, you know, in Europe, they were all so righteous, even you know, 100 years ago. Unfortunately, Haskalah was very strong. There was a lot... So... 
there was, a, you know, obviously the, the high people were far greater than we could ever imagine, but there was also not, uh, yeah. And again, this also is, is very hard because, you know, could you imagine, we, we don't really understand because everybody today have shower home, you take shower everything. Let's say a guy that takes shower for a week, you know how the P2, how it tempted to take a shower, it's a big desire. Mm -hmm. It's greater than any meal or any pleasure. Mm -hmm. You really want to clean yourself. How you feel when you have, you know, you don't really know, but I know what is when you walk a day in the kitchen. I used to work, I used to work. Uh, 15 hours in front of the grill. Yeah, you know what's to take a shower? Smell like a burger. Uh, uh, what's to take a shower? You smell like the mayo on your hands and like, uh. What's to take a shower? The end of the day, hot shower Amazing. with soap. You Amazing. say after this shower, I'm a chadesh chadashim. It's Amazing. a mechaye, we have no idea. I know because <laughs> I am a team, literally. These people, they were taking shower once a week. Yeah. It was a big mishap for yeah. them to don't get a... Yeah, let's finish up. Last piece, Chavre. Tanu Abanat, says the Breitah. Mechem adam alutnit, aluntit, you're allowed to warm up towels. Okay, warm up towels on Shabbat. Okay, we have somebody, he's not feeling so good, his stomach hurts. So you could warm up towels and put it on your stomach on Shabbat. But you're not allowed to warm up a kettle, meaning, again, it was warmed up before Shabbat, obviously, it can't be that it was done in some Isur type of way, and put it on your stomach on Shabbat. And this would even be a so during the weekday because of sakana. What's the sakana? It spill on somebody and, and, and burn them. So now there's three reasons brought. What exactly is this problem of the kumkumus? What's the problem? Rashi learns, Shema yishvechu alav v'nimtza ochet b'shabbat b'chamin. You understand? This is like an extension of the gzera. It's very look, interesting. Very fun. If it, it, the, the kettle might spill and then it would be like rechitza b'shabbat. Very fast. Now according to Rashi, it would only be a problem if it's open. But if you have like a, what is it called? The, what are those? The, the hot water bottle. You know what those things are? The, Plastic. Put on your head sometimes when, when you're not feeling so Plastic. good. Plastic. The, the Chaurak, according to this, it wouldn't be a problem because the whole issue is it might spill and rechitza. Mm -hmm. But Rashi, that's not allowed. Tosvot has two other reasons altogether. One reason he says is, it might spill va'atili de schita. Very interesting. Tosvot says, this has nothing to do with rechitza uh, b'shabbat. This is a different halacha. It'll spill on the towel, causing an issue of schita. It does make more sense. Or, Tosvot says, it's a refua issue. We know on Shabbat, the Chachamim et Gzera... It's a shchikat samemanim. Why is it for shchikat samemanim? Chachamim et Gzera, you're not allowed to do refua, because originally, the way they did refua was they ground up spices. Mm. So generally, they prohibited things that are more like refua. He says, just to put towels, that's not so much refua. But to put a bottle of uh, hot water, that's more like a refua, and they prohibited that as well. Now, comes out according to Tosvot, comes out... Either way, you're learning schita, but I guess the schita issue, the refua for sure. Refua is even if it's a closed water bottle, yes. it's a refua issue, yes. so that would be yes. a different problem. Yes. Rashi learns it's a rechitza issue, so if it was a closed water bottle, no the chawara, it's acceptable. It's be enough gamina between the ways that we're learning. But the, either way, the way Tosfot is has nothing to do with really, it's not so connected to this sugya, because this sugya we're talking about the rechitza issue. Rashi learns it's a rechitza issue, Tosfot is either a schita or a refua, but it's a different issue altogether. Okay, we're going to stop here, Chavre. We'll pick up Tanu uh, Abanan. Tomorrow, Bezat Hashem, Mem Mun Bet. Maybe Adam Kiton Maim. Yes, Bezat Hashem. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Wow.